Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. We are live, finally. So thank you finally. all for joining us on our River to River Chai Time. This afternoon, our special guest is Ritu Danya. Hello, Ritu. Ciao. Hello, Selvaja. How nice to be part of your Chai Time chat. I'm honored and very, very happy. And it's a really Chai Time for me. <laughs> thank you for accepting our invitation, Ritu. And uh, it is an honor for us. We are very, very happy. Ritu is uh, now in New Delhi. And she has just disappeared from the screen. Now she's coming back. I hope the connection is fine. So yes. I'd just like to say a few words for our Italian friends who maybe are following us and we're expecting something in Italian. Buonasera, uh, amici italiani. Uh, grazie per essere collegati a questo River to River Chai Time oggi di pomeriggio. Abbiamo Ritu Dalmio, Dalmia, una chef indiana in collegamento da Nuova Delhi. Il nostro uh, Chai Time di oggi sarà in inglese. Eh, e quindi eh, ci scusiamo per chi non parla l'inglese ma eh, è la, la lingua di oggi è l'inglese ora now we can speak back to English yes. Yes. So, so Rito, you I have promise you by night, next year if we do a chat we will do only in Italian because I need to practice my Italian to speak a little bit better lovely, lovely 2021 benissimo, it's done so of course I'm drinking a chai, a chai with no milk but a, a I am chai. drinking a chai with milk, with cardamom, with ginger, with fennel seeds, and my in my favorite cup, which says chefs are hot because oh. I am hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I read so Rito is an amazing creature, I would say, and she is exactly the I mean, what, what we are what we are doing since 20 years with river to river because from one river to the other, from Italy to India and back. This is what we do with our film festival. She has been doing it with food through the two countries. So when she was slightly more than a kid, she traveled, she, she had another job. She traveled to Italy for this other job. She bumped into Italian food, she loved it. Then she came back to India and she opened an Italian restaurant. Then, and then all this began and she opened also Italian restaurants in Indian restaurants in Italy. So she is exactly river to river. And, um, but I wanted to ask something to Rito. Which is the first, uh, yes. one of the first recipes, all the recipes that you remember with more sweet memories of your childhood uh, that was cooked at home by someone at, someone at home, someone of the family or someone at home? So I have two memories. Believe it or not, they are, one is Italian, and one is, of course, Indian. So when I was 10 years old, I went to a school trip to Italy, to Rome, because I went to a missionary school. I went to a convent school, and it was 100 years of celebration of convent schools around the world. So our nuns took us to Italy to be in the Vatican every morning from 5.30 to 8.30 to listen to the Mass. This was the price we had to pay to be in Italy. And because they were very poor and the children were very poor, every day for dinner, we used to get a spaghetti pomodoro or a minestrone for 30 days. All the other Indian children were very angry. They were very upset. Uh, they wanted to eat Indian food. And for me, I still remember the first bite that I took of the spaghetti with just pomodoro e un po' basilico. It was, it was love for me. Even now, when I'm depressed, when I feel I need something to comfort me, it is just a simple pasta al pomodoro. And that immediately puts me at ease. It's really love something you. which I love to do. And the Indian food that really comforts me and always makes me happy is something called khichdi. Now, khichdi is India's superfood. Um, I used to get into a lot of trouble in Chittamani when I started serving it. Chittamani is our Indian restaurant in Milan because people thought it was risotto. Now, <laughs> risotto is al dente. It has to have the waves. Whilst khichdi is rice, lentils, vegetable, ghee, which is clarified butter, all cooked together. So it was, again, a poor man's food. So one bowl meal which gives you the proteins and the lentils, which gives you the carbohydrates and rice. But for me, it was 
a sense of home. So when I used to live in London for a few years, and every time I was homesick, a bowl of khichdi is what used to really calm me down and make me remember home again. So these are the two things which I would say are my most favorite memories of food, India and Italy. Lovely, lovely. Well, I must say that for us, pasta al pomodoro is, I mean, all Italian. Pasta al pomodoro yes. is the basic of our cuisine. It's like ra rice and dal for, for Exactly. Italy. So, so Raja, in my last life, in my last life, I was an Italian. So, of course, sure, you were an Italian. This is like my <laughs> absolutely because you cannot love so much pasta, pasta al pomodoro. Uh, if, if you're not half Italian, you have Italy in your DNA in some way. Oh, there is someone saying, Oh, Bilal, hello, Bilal, who is saying, Yes, two, oh, yeah, two great culinary traditions, India and Italy. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> of course, of course. My and friends tell me I was Indian in my previous life. Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you even have this Indian look about you. You're wearing a kurta from Bangladesh. You speak to me half the time in Hindi. Uh, you pakka, I haven't heard the word pakka in so long. So, and you even shake your head like that, Salvaja. So, <laughs> definitely, you know, we got exchanged at birth. Your mother. Yes. Uh, <laughs> here, and it's the either way around. Okay. <laughs> It's true. It's true. It's true. So, so, uh, so, what are the in these days where you're all? I mean, we are a little bit more in this moment here in Italy. Things are like a little bit looser. We can go out. Restaurants have slowly began opening up with all the rules. In India, it's still very close. You're still Correct. like two or weeks ago. So what? Um, what, what are you doing? Are you thinking about new recipes? Are you experimenting? Are you, we all cooked like mad during our terrible. I know. Oh. I know. In fact, I'm very scared, Salvaja, that I will be out of business very soon because in this COVID period, so many new home chefs have come up. People who hated cooking were cooking every day. Every day when I open Instagram, YouTube, the only thing I see is recipes and food and more food. So I'm very scared that I better polish up my skills a little bit more because I will soon have lots of competition. But jokes apart, yes. uh, I think food is something that is very comforting. It's very nourishing. After mother's love, the only thing that can give you that comfort, I think, is food. And this is a difficult period for everyone in yes. Italy, in India, worldwide. So what does one do? What does either you can sit and worry about what's going to happen next or distract yourself by cooking, eating a meal that gives you the satisfaction? So I was in Goa, actually. I came back to Delhi only three days ago. So mm -hmm. I was one of the few lucky people who was in lockdown in Goa. I was yeah. in Italy. More pleasant. Yeah. Yes. Till 23rd of February, I was in Milan. And when the talks happened of the cases rising on 26th of February, I came back to India. And that time, I thought the world is going to change in Italy and India will remain the same and everything will be okay in India. But of course, I mean, this is just shows how naive we all are, even now, and we have no idea what's coming next. Italy has opened up, I agree, but there's still a lot of fear. I mean, we opened our restaurants last Monday in Milan, yes. which is, as you all know, very badly hit the worst hit yes. area in the whole of Italy is Lombardia. And yeah. people are not coming out. People are still very scared. In India, we had one of the most difficult, the most cruel and the harshest lockdown ever. It was done from one minute to another with four hours of notice. Uh, mm. No supply chains were in order. So when I was in Goa for 26 days, I had no fresh vegetables, no milk, no any fresh produce. So my main cooking was happening only with rice and lentils. So the good part is that I really started cooking a lot with very basics. Mm. Um, zero waste food, which... Yeah, zero waste food was something I was always talking about in theory. But those 60 days, I practiced it. When I was cooking potatoes, I didn't know I'm going to get vegetables next day. So next day, I was making a curry out of the skin of potato. You know, one day. So when I was making khichdi, next day, I was making arancini out of khichdi. 
so really you know i was stealing jackfruits i was stealing raw mango from the orchards nearby because there was nothing available in the market so in i really practiced zero waste cooking and i hope to put that in my menu in the coming months whenever chitta mani is back in future again uh, full in action because it was a very interesting i've always cooked but i've never cooked like this so this for me as a chef also was a completely new experience altogether well lovely because these occasions are also those to experiment new things that maybe one would have never thought about because the time exactly. is so particular and so unique uh, that that it, it also obliges us to produce certain things in certain way to have certain thoughts and then maybe the ways and thoughts are are interesting intelligent and maybe exactly a kilometer of zer or more than before and you know and all this so this is this is i mean i i heard that during I, I, on, on the news here in Italy, they were also saying that never like in these two months of heavy lockdown, the Italians have not wasted at all. So this is a good news. Yes. The food, yes. because everything was being re, um, exactly. Some Maria Stella is saying, "Lovely, we have no waste." Exactly. So exactly. So we, my, myself, I mean, I, of course, I don't waste. Many people don't waste, but maybe it, it can happen in some some situations, some families. So reutilizing the food and being very careful and thinking about a new way to use, like you did with the with with the potato, with the piece of the potato that you wouldn't have used, or else. So this is very interesting, and it all te it teaches us. I mean, too. No, to and also, careful. I think the other big change that's happened in lockdown, which I think especially more in Italy than in India, is, uh, you know, in ancient times, Italians used to go out to eat for a special occasion. okay it was always a celebration or a weekend but in recent time i think because of urbanization with more spending power and with so many restaurants in italy which are serving same food like home food people started eating out three to four times a week and cooking maybe once or twice in a week True. this i think will change again because people have suddenly rediscovered home cooking and this i think will be a very big change which we will see post the tsunami it is true it is true myself i had never done pizza in my life and i found myself doing the you know the pizza thing and then pizza. rolling it and yes. now i'm a pizza girl i mean i've been doing it all oh, oh. I'm, I'm, waiting, i'm waiting for an invitation salvaja <laughs> <laughs> so someone above because a comments of going on so now hello to me to friends also to me people from the past and so this is lovely thank you for following us someone was also asking if the festival is this year yes it is very much on it will be our 20th edition our dates are from 3 to 8 december and yes there we go i can confirm we will be on in the screening hall with the rules that there will be at that moment and in a virtual theater so yes and we will all wait for you at for our 20th edition And Wonderful. oh, I see Patricia Raveggi that I haven't been in touch for for many years. Hello, <laughs> Patricia. Patricia, and, e Pat e Patricia Raveggi. Yes. You can you please give her a big big kiss from me. She was our director of our cultural center. I know. Eighteen years ago. Exactly. Rito keeps on coming and going, so but Patricia, hello. It's lovely to have you. Follow she up was the first it. director. She was the first director of the cultural center when we opened the cafe. Exactly. But this you need to come and see what it is like now. <laughs> so yes, lovely. She's writing in her live comments. Hello, Patricia. We all we would love to see you again. And Rita remembers you with a lot of lovely memories. So <laughs> because Rita was also in charge of the cafe of the Italian Cultural Center. Correct. And um, oh, so here is a long question, Rita, for you. Technical. Let's read it. Can you see it on your oh, screen? Oh wow! Wait. You know, I've become of that. I'll read it. I, I will read Where it. I'll, wait. I'll read. Hi, Rita. I'm Ravi, born in Delhi and living in Italy since 2007 in Bari, that is in the south. Oh, in Bari, Rome, Turin, and now Paris. Oh, so he's gone around Italy. I have seen some of your shows. on a tv and simply loved it india's land of curry in the interest of european public could you please explain what actually curry is here the common perception is just a powder available in market as curry 
and one just puts it a little in the chicken to make chicken curry. You're right, Ravi. Thank you for the question. Absolutely. It's a yes. very interesting question and something which I answer every day in Chittamani and something no. which I explain to my team on daily basis. There is nothing called curry. That's the first point. You see, curry or the so-called curry powder was actually invented by the British. Okay? When they wanted something with the Asian flavors, Indian flavors, they would use this Coleman's curry powder, which was mainly curcuma and basically some cumin. What we have here is something called kadi, K-A-D-I, which is basically made with yogurt. Anything which has a sauce, anything which has a gravy, we call it curry. It could be a chicken curry, it could be a potato curry, it could be a pea curry, it could be a cheese curry, anything. But the spices are not curry. So the biggest difference, what people need to understand that curry is not a spice. Curry means something which has a gravy in it, something which has a sauce in it. A spice really is different for every uh, dish per se. In fact, it's very funny because I started my career with Italian food. I know it's very shameful to say that. And my first love was always Italian food. It's only much later in my life that I learned how to cook Indian food. And I have to admit, it's bloody complicated. It is so damn complicated. And this really has been a great learning experience for me because this Indian spices are very complicated. You know, you have each one has a very, very strong, distinct flavor. And the nuance of making Indian food is adding the right spice in the right quantity with the right meat, fish, or vegetable. In fact, what I learned, at least with the home cooking that I started experimenting with, going to different homes, that every dish actually has one specific spice, which is the hero. You know, not like what people think of Indian food, that you add cumin, you add, uh, you know, fenugreek, you add uh, asafoetida, you add garam masala, you add kurkuma, and that's Indian food. No, it doesn't work that way. As I said, it is complicated and the nuances are very, very, very delicate. So curry, guys, do me a favor. Don't ever go to a supermarket and ask for curry. It is shameful. Okay, ask for spices which are specific and different. And please, very, very important request. Indian food is not just about chicken curry. Every region in India has a different chicken curry. So there is no one type of chicken curry as well. So be kinder to restaurants when you go and be nicer when you go to supermarket and ask for spices. <laughs> Thank you, Ritu. Thank you. Uh, it's true. What you're saying, I have noticed it many times. Exactly. Exactly. So there is another technical question by Nihar, if we want to put it on screen. So yes, what, I will... why in India we don't have cheese culture despite of all milk giving domestic animals we have? Is it due to weather? Okay. It's a very interesting question. And I don't know if I have a right or a wrong answer about it, but I have a theory about it. Uh, food, every food, whether it's Indian, whether it's Italian, whether it's Chinese, whether it's French, I think it has very much to do with the climate and the environment that you live in. I mean, if you look at the basic Ayurveda as well, which is in some ways practiced also in Italian food without being realized, is... Everything that we eat or our food that is in the area is based on what climate we are in, what sort of work we are doing, and what does our body need in that particular climate. So in India, we don't need, our body doesn't need cheese. Okay, our body is not made for it. To so just to give you an example, if you are in Rajasthan, which is very hot, which is very dry, which is very uh, acrid, why do you have food which has so much fat, ghee, etc.? It's a very heavy food with lots of oil and ghee. You know, you have the dal, bati, churma, which is... And one could never understand it. But there's a reasoning for it. The reason is because of the dryness in the air, our body needs the lubrication. 
you know all our nerves are covered by something called ma malign or something like that and the which is sort of a cholesterol including our brain so it needs that oiling that lubrication why do we have spicy food because again of the temperature when the body is you know hot it needs to sweat to cool it down what will make you sweat spices are going to make you sweat and that way the body temperature is the same level as outside temperature if you go to ethiopia they in 50 degree temperature they are wearing a blanket and they are only drinking hot tea all the time if you go to kerala the air is humid so it's rice rather than wheat coconut rather than you know masalas so same way our bodies in india or our temperature in india is not meant for something as it's meant for very cold temperatures it's meant for a very different environment of course we can make cheese we are making cheese maybe we are not making it in india but all our indians are the people making mozzarella and parmesan in soranya and in napoli so we are making cheese but i'm not so sure if uh, environmentally our bodies in india are meant for it lovely thank you thank you so other question so <laughs> in um, ravi again is asking if in your italian restaurants in india in india do you do you do 100% authentic italian food or is it a kind of fusion to adapt it to the taste of of the indian so i'm not ashamed to say at all but i'm a purist i've always been a purist uh, which means but that but i'm a clever girl i may be purist but i'm clever so you see what i do is uh, when i get a menu i don't look at italy as lombardia or piemont or sicily or uh, i mean i look at it in totality so when i make the menu i choose the antipasti from all the regions which will go well with indian taste buds but i will not mess around with the recipe so for example i will never put any pasta with squid ink in my menus here because indians don't like it i will not put a ribolita in my menu because indians don't like bitter vegetables so i choose my dishes based on what will go with indian taste buds or palate but i will not overcook the pasta for you i will not give you overcooked risotto if you ask me for a pasta with chicken olive mushroom tomato sunrai tomato i will ask you to find another restaurant but i will choose food that in taste buds will appreciate in any case i think uh, for indian taste buds italian is the number one european cuisine in the world i mean they love italian food you ask them to go for a french food french restaurants has never worked in india because mm -hmm. it is too bland for indian taste buds but italian they are the happiest eating italian and times have changed 20 years ago it was only pizza and pasta but now they have learned the better nuances so i think italian food in india doesn't need to be bastardized to meet the taste buds of indians because indians love it irrespective lovely lovely and then our two cultures i mean we have quite a few things in common of course and one of the things that we have in common is the love for cinema of course and big important cinema on both sides and the love for food And absolutely we, love our absolutely. Food. we are big food eaters i mean over here and over there we love we love to eat we, we have a, a variety of exactly of dishes exactly. you don't have one thing two things both indian and italian cuisine have, have a variety of dishes veg non veg so that is also the beauty of both our cuisine and so we are able to appreciate, to appreciate also the cuisine of the other countries so yeah. that is the, That's quite unique no, but, and special of yes, both of our cuisines, if, if I'm not mistaken, Rico. So, no, for me, I'll tell you what's also very interesting about Italian and Indian culture, where food is concerned. When I'm with my Italian friends, we are eating lunch together, and the discussion is what will we eat for dinner. Okay, it's the same. Sitting in India, you're eating a meal, but your discussion is only around what is the next meal going to be about. what did i eat yesterday what will i cook tomorrow which dinner party i went to and what was so food and family the other thing which is very interesting for me is italy is the only country in europe which still has very strong family ties 
Italy is still one of the few countries, not so much as before, where you will still see young men or young girls who are still not being able to support themselves, still living with their family or the families helping them out. Same in India. I mean, any other country in Europe, by the time you're 18, please go find your own way and find yeah. your thing. So it's the family ties. And as you talk about movies, I mean, I, I think what very important is I don't think Indians still know what amazing films Italy has produced. It is, it is, it's something which they really still need to discover. Okay, I will not tell you who was the first Italian director I saw. You will be very, very embarrassed. So I shall be absolutely quiet. But uh, <laughs> think, I give you two guesses. If you can guess it right. So the first Italian director that you saw in your life, a film of this, is it one of the big, I mean, Fellini, one of the big, big yeah, ones? Yeah, that came later. But it was very embarrassing movies that I saw. The first taste of my Italian film was a little bit embarrassing. And I was very young. Think. Oh. Tinto Brass. Oh, Tinto Brass. <laughs> but Tinto Brass is a master of that genre. He's of done course, a, I mean, so absolutely. I was 14. I was 14 when I first saw. But what I'm saying is not... The Italian movie repertoire is so amazing. Oh, yes. It is so, so amazing that I think that's one thing that the Indians still need to discover, that there is more to just UK, United States for movies. I mean, the quality, I mean, if you see movies of Ferzan Ospetek, if you see even this new mini series which has come on Elena Ferrante's books, uh, yes. you know, it's, it's so amazing. And uh, hopefully, like we have discovered the food, we shall soon discover the movies as well. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, Italian cinema is very, very interesting. And it has a lot of great talent now, still now working and also the past, of course. And, uh, and yeah, and then India, of course, has, has its own cinema that is quite unique, as we all yeah, know. Yeah, it's a different genre altogether. <laughs> totally. Yes, but I mean, but during the festival, in all these years, we have also learned ourselves and showed also to our audience the uh, the difference and the 360 degrees uh, variety of Indian cinema. Exactly. Because Indian cinema is not only Bollywood. I myself no, am a big course. fan of Bollywood. I, I love Bollywood. I mean, if a Bollywood movie is well done, I will, I love it. We have seen great Bollywood movies during our River to Rivers. And yeah. so, so, so the point, the, the, the point before anything is quality like when you for a film like also when you cook a dish the quality is the most important Absolutely. thing of the product Absolutely. Here to fill, here a dish then yes. you can decide that you prefer a veg and a veg i don't know a love story or an action movie but quality is for anything so you know it's very interesting you say that because some years ago i used to do a festival at my restaurant in india called cinema e chibo so what we used to do was I used to take film clips from uh, different movies which showed a particular dish and guests would see that clip and I would produce the same on the table for them. So I nice. still remember uh, for the bread service, I used uh, a clip from Focaccia Blues, which is, I don't know if you have seen the movie where she's making the focaccia. It is, it is fantastic. So... Then the bread service was done. For antipasti, I would pick up, for example, Io sono amore, the prawns which Krakow had made for Tilda Swinton's movie. So they see the clip and the same thing then is produced for them. Uh, the cake was done from La Fate Ignoranti. So it was really, so for me, I think food and cinema in some ways, they both are pornography. Okay, when you see food on a screen, there is nothing more sensuous than seeing a dish or a beautiful plate when you see it on a screen. It is true, it is true. And, and, and in fact, there, there are some people who don't enjoy eating and I think that they really lose a, a part of the, of yes. the joy of life. There are a few people who just I mean, eat because it is necessary because we have to eat. But the joy look of at me. Do I look like someone 
who doesn't enjoy <laughs> no, no, but it's love. I mean, I love eating. I love eating. I've always been told that when I eat, uh, it, you can see that I love eating. But there are actually people who just who just eat for the for the sake. I mean, for, exactly. For, to, exactly. Yeah, to survive. But um, so is it? So we had actually. Rito had said, "I will, I will prepare a recipe and try and make it in and live." Now I don't know if this is is doable with okay. this connection. I'm but going to. So you see, with my chai, I wanted to eat something called sabudana vada, okay, which is basically. Is this, is how is it called? Sabu dana. Sabu dana means sago. Vada is a fried fritter. It's okay, very bad. simple. What you do is, I'm going to go. Let's take a walk to my uh -huh. kitchen. I'm going to try to show it to you. I'm not so sure if it'll work or not, but I will try my best because I'm technically challenged. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So I'll tell you, let me show you the ingredients. This is sago, which has been soaked in a little bit hot water. What is sago? Sago is taro. 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 Um, not taro. Sago. Sago sabudana. Uh, of what family? I mean, look is it, it a vegetable? Is it ask a fruit? someone to look it up on Google? How, how do you call it in Italian? But what it's family? Like, tapioca. It's tapioca. Okay, tapioca. Tapioca. Okay. Yeah. So it's been soaked in water for about 15, 20 minutes. I have some onions. Very simple. I like to do simple things because I'm a fake chef. So anything which takes too much time, I don't want to do. I have some potatoes which I have mashed, and there's some coriander. In Italians hate coriander, so if you want, just add mint leaves or some parsley. I have added some coriander. Okay, so it's very simple. Let's see if you can. Can you see? Yes. See the screen. Can you see what I'm? Okay. Okay. The connection is a little bit. To me. Yes. Wait. So here's the potato. Yeah. Which I'm going to add in the sago. There. Can you see it? Yes. Which is the tapioca. Yes. I add some onion. Yeah. Chopped onion. I have some peanut which I have crushed. Okay. Just some peanuts. You can add some almonds if you want, but I prefer it with peanuts. Okay. So I add that as well. And now comes my most important thing. My spice box. Oh. Can you see it? So this is my spice box. I the salt I like to use Himalayan salt even for my regular food. Okay. okay. So this is the pink Himalayan salt of cumino. Can you see the cumino? Kind of, yes. And that's it. So, okay. So uh, lovely. I'm I'm writing it down. Can you see I'm better. Now? I can't hear you. I am writing the recipe down. Um, Lakshmi? Oh, I will tell you the recipe at the end. Okay. Okay, so all I'm going to do is, is you, if you see, it's so simple. Potato, sago, tapioca, onions, some coriander or any fresh leaves you want, salt, and cumin. That's it. So if you see, there's only one spice which is going to be the hero in this dish, which is the cumin. I'm going to mix it together. Make little polpette. Either you can fry it or you can cook it in the pan. Okay. So let's just quickly fry some or cook it in the pan. And I can have some with my tea and I can send you some virtually for you to have it with your tea. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> so whilst that's getting done. As I said, if anyone wants to write the quantities down, I'm happy to give you the quantities. Okay, so so now Rita will give us the quantities of of the of the polpette with tapioca. Tabu dana vada. Patate. So polpette di patate e tapioca con cipolla e arachidi. Giusto? Yes. So per 
più o meno 10 for more or less for 10 polpette i would use three to four boiled potatoes one cup tapioca soaked in hot water for about 15 minutes one onion very finely chopped if you like spicy you can add a little bit of green chili as well or fresh chili powder mm -hmm. about one handful of roasted peanuts crushed one handful of any fresh herb that you would like to add to it salt and cumin that's it lovely Simple as hell. and, and like one, said, one question when you do the when you do the polpette and you fry them do you put yes. some flour around them nothing not required because you see tapioca has starch in it okay so it binds it together so you don't need any flour you don't need any breadcrumbs you don't need anything you don't so, need egg, nothing that's the nothing thing. nothing nothing at all for people who like to watch their weight you can also just roast it make polpette and just grill it in a pan rather than frying it as you can see me i like it when it's full of calories and crispy and delicious so i like prefer it when it's fried lovely lovely so i, I love it like that also so someone is asking a friend from bombay nakshi is asking sabudana vada is, is is this correct so actually exactly. if this friend is asking from bombay the origins of this dish is actually from maharashtra so it is let me tell you a little bit it's a very funny thing yes. i am a marwari marwaris are basically from shekhawati area in rajasthan who early days were traders so they to places like calcutta to mumbai they moved to ahmedabad because of the business now rajasthan you've been there many times so you know it very well it's dry it's got no the food is disgusting it's terrible uh, there are no fresh vegetables available everything they use is with chickpea so wherever they went whether it was maharashtra whether they went to bengal whether they went to gujarat they took the best of the cuisines from there added it with their own and started calling it marwari food so when i was very young i remember having a very big fight with the person from maharashtra saying sabudana vada what we are going to eat soon is my food because i grew up with it it was cooked in my house three times a week to have as a snack for tea or even to eat for breakfast and of course she said you're crazy it's it's our food it's only much later that i realized that we don't have food of our own um, we marwaris have stolen from every region that we went to called it our even after stealing it was quite a better version so yes your friend from mumbai it's 100% your food i accept and i had <laughs> my i bow my head in shame lovely 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 thank you uh now i wanted to just say the entire recipe quickly in italian if there are any italians following yes. so sabudana vada una tap you can correct me if i'm wrong i wrote it down una tapioca per 10 polpette, una tapioca che va messa nell'acqua calda per 15 minuti, 3 o 4 patate leste, una cipolla rossa affettata a pezzettini molto piccoli, una manciata di benita ehm, o di coriandolo, di erba fresca e poi ehm, noccioline eh, arrostite a pezzettini, stavo, e poi una spezia, perché Vito sceglie una sola spezia che è The Hero, che è la protagonista del piatto, e che in questo caso è il cumino. A quel punto poi si fanno le polpette e si chiudono. Ecco, benissimo. Allora, c'è una... There is a question. Also, if you see... Yes. I'll show you the polpette is ready. Eccole, here they are. Can you? Could you see it? Yes, we could see them very briefly, but yes, we have seen them. Yes. So someone from Sri Lanka. Could you see the polpette? Yes. 
So someone okay. from, from Sri Lanka, Donatella, is saying that she has been cooking them in Sri Lanka with the, with the, um, with the Sri Lankan curry, I mean with Sri Lankan spices, but she has been doing kind of these things in Sri Lanka. Can you imagine? But this is a lovely yeah, recipe. Yeah, but as I said. <laughs> yes. Of course, of course. I will no, try food is sometimes... No, what I was saying is sometimes food really does not have borders. I mean, I'm very surprised to hear they have something similar in Sri Lanka. Because, I mean, from Maharashtra, how it has reached Sri Lanka or whether it came from Sri Lanka to Maharashtra, we don't know. Exactly. But it was the same, for example, when I was in Sicily. I mean, the first time I tasted like eating uh, gatia, what we eat here, which is basically fritters made with chickpea. When yes. I was in Sarzana and I ate farinata di ceci, it is exactly what we have called besan kachilla. I mean, marzipane is nothing but a badam ki barfi. So actually, what's really nice about food is sometimes it really has no borders and you really don't know how and where the origins were, but today it becomes part of cuisine irrespective. Absolutely. I mean, and food is also a way of, like chai, I mean, chai was saying this, Last week, chai is something you can drink at any moment of the day, any time Absolutely. of the day. Absolutely. Situation, the most simple, you go to a market, you buy uh, some cotton and they will offer chai sitting in their shop or you go in a very lovely house and you will be offered chai. So chai yes. is absolutely... And, and the same is with food. I mean, uh, yes. so, so that's the way of, human, of us human beings to communicate. Bond. Also. It is a bonding. It's the best yeah. way to bond. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so we love to bond. Yes. So Italians need to learn and not get upset saying that chin chin can only be done with vino and not with anything else. So I say chin chin to you and salute with my chai selvaggia. Salute. <laughs> salute. So I um, I remember once I was I was in Gong with oh someone the oh there everyone is saying I tried Sabudana Pando my first trip to India but my friend how oh, nice served with chai there you go yes exactly. yes <laughs> and it's, it's so simple it is well I will absolutely try I will absolutely yes. try I Ravi is again yes I mean you have a lot of yeah yeah a lot of people saying that they have tried and done and this and that. I remember years ago I was in Goa with some Indian friends and they had asked me to cook uh, some pasta. So I said, okay, what can I do? Pasta and pesto. So I, I bought it, I, I tried, I did a little bit of pesto, I bought it, whatever, and I cooked the pasta. Coming back to you when you say, if you do it, you do it al dente and everything. And I did the pasta al dente. <laughs> but this is raw. It, it, I yes. They have never eaten. So it's so. I mean, it also depends. You have to maintain the original. You have to also educate them. Exactly. So I'll tell you. When I was very young, I hope my friends are watching this. But when I was very young, I used to try my Italian cooking on my school friends because no one else was interested. And I still remember the first time I made an olio aglio peperoncino. I think I must have been about twelve or thirteen. And someone asked me. One of them asked me. Why, where is the ketchup? Where is the tomato ketchup to go with it? Okay, and the risotto, they said, Ritu, you forgot to cook the rice. I think you need to first boil the rice. So it's also a matter of education. And if uh, I remember, I used to do a TV series for Italian food many years ago for Indian audience. And the only reason I did that was because I used to have so many people They would say, Sometimes oh, well. yeah, so they used to ask me, why is the Parma ham cold? Uh, why is the Gorgonzola blue? So I said, okay, let me go in Italy to places where Parmesan is produced, where Gorgonzola is produced, where pasta is produced, because uh, it's very important that people also educate and learn. Just the way curry is something which is not a spice powder, the same way, I think, education and exposure and trying the food in its real and true form, which is very, very important. I can see Pier Paolo is exactly. there. Pier Paolo, I don't know when I'll be back in Chittamani. I am stuck in a lockdown here. 
okay i am i will take the first flight i spoke the to the italian ambassador a few days ago asking when do you think i'll be allowed to go back to italy he promised me the first flight that goes from india to italy he and i both will be on that flight lovely hello dear paolo <laughs> friends from all over the world popping in to say hello to rito <laughs> And no, it's so nice. <laughs> lovely, lovely. So we also will have to come in your restaurant in Milano, Cittamani, exactly. where all of this is slowly loosened up. Yes, yes, wait, yes, Italy is waiting for you. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, so, so I, am I. <laughs> so I have now a very basic question for you. Uh, the, the chai, can you please give us the recipe for a good chai? Oh, again, every household has a different recipe. Everyone oh. will tell them that their chai is the best. But I'll tell you the chai that I, I don't drink chai most of the time. I drink coffee. But once in a while, when I drink a chai, the way I like to drink it is disgusting, but I love it. So <laughs> what we do is, first, my mother drinks only with milk. She doesn't use any water. But for me, that's too heavy. So I would recommend what you do is half milk, half water when it's put on the fire in the cold water milk itself you add a small piece of ginger crushed you add a few uh, semi dis uh, finocchio some fennel seeds you add two pieces of cardamom crushed you add a small piece of cinnamon crushed then you let it cook for about 6 to 7 minutes on very very slow fire because you want the milk and the water to take the flavor of the cardamom, of uh, fennel, of cinnamon, and ginger. So this is the main ingredients for me for a masala chai. Then last, you add the tea leaves. Let it boil up two to three times. That's another three to four minutes. Strain it and drink it. And if you want to show that you're very rich and you come from a very affluent family, you add three to four strands of saffron soaked in hot water okay so that's the thing that you serve in weddings etc what you say kesar chai which is with saffron but i normally just like it with ginger cinnamon cardamom and fennel seeds but lovely lovely <laughs> also the the, the kesar chai interesting because of course it's a Status symbol, you serve it with absolutely. Kesar. And kesar. what they used to do in earlier times on the tea on the top, they would make sure there was one strand of uh, saffron which would float around so that people could see that the tea had saffron that was used in it. Lovely. <laughs> well, thank and you. We have the and guess what? The Sabudana Vada has oh. come for me, and this is served with a mint chutney. Which Love. I'm going to eat. I'm sending two pieces for you, two for me. Thank you so much. And My just pleasure. how is the mint chutney? Because mint chutney is a chutney that is used very often in Indian and cuisine. with everything. With so everything. Again, so, so the recipe of mint chutney, and I will write it down. So I have a secret to it, which I actually learned in Goa. So what I do is take a whole onion. And I roast it on open fire, like you would ro do an arrosto. So basically, instead of using it raw, I roast an onion. I roast one green chili. Then in a mixy, handful of mint, the cooked onion, the cooked green chili, salt, ginger, garlic, sugar, and lemon juice. And that's your mint chutney. Wow. Just blend it all together. I will, uh, because mint chutney is amazing. And, yes. and uh, someone is and saying, I love pudina chutney. That's and it, yes. So the trick is, look, in restaurants, when you get pudina chutney, they normally add yogurt to it. At okay. home, we don't add yogurt. So if you see it, it is just the mint, garlic, onion, and if you want, if it's in season, you can add some green mango to it. Oh, wow. Lovely. <laughs> I once ate in a household in Mumbai when I was there a few months ago, uh, an amazing tomato chutney. Yes, yes. Just the way I think there's so many, I mean, 
what I said, what's really amazing about India is there's so much diversity in food. There's so many secret home recipes. And every region, I mean, I as an Indian, I think don't know even 80% of the things that exist in our country. So exactly. I really need not one life, but many lifetimes to discover what all exists in Indian food. Well, listen, thank you so much. Now we will uh, leave you to your lovely pulpit. Yes, <laughs> my mouth is watering. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Salvaja. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you everyone for joining in. And, and, uh, and we look forward. Florence. And we look forward to seeing you in our country soon. I look and forward to it as well. To eat together uh, a dish, a lovely dish. Yes. And then thank you for everyone who has been following us. We will see you next Thursday with um, a live another another of our River to River live chats with Minakshi Shedde, who is a journalist and is a film curator. She will be in Mumbai. Arita Cenni, who is an Italian journalist of ANSA. She is in Italy, but she usually is the ANSA person for India. And so we will have a nice chat between India and Italy about quite a few uh, topics, interesting topics. Uh, next Thursday, uh, another chat with girls. <laughs> uh -huh. Like this one. And so I will see you all next Thursday. And Ritu, thank you very, very Grazie. much. Grazie. Grazie a tutto. It's thank you. Lovely. Namaste. Thank you to everyone. And thank enjoy you. your food. I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.